Should I invest in mobile home parks is a question that's often thrown at me. Yeah, but regardless of what anyone tells you as far as the positives, there's also some ugly truths about mobile home park investing that nobody's gonna tell you until now. Stay tuned until the end to hear the most unexpected negative that nobody realizes until they already own a mobile home park. When I first started investing and buying mobile home parks, really up until a couple years ago, mobile home parks were the redheaded stepchild of real estate. Then interest in them suddenly exploded. Today, the majority of my real estate portfolio is made up of mobile home parks, and that isn't changing anytime soon, but there is some big misconceptions floating around due to all the hype. Let's talk about what few other MHP investors are gonna tell you. This is the dark side to mobile home park investing. You can't control people. Let's get this right out in the open. Mobile home parks are not passive real estate investments. And they never will be because they require active management. People think that because you rent the lot, not the home, it's easy to manage. You're dealing with residents that have problems and issues, and although technology is simplified and streamlined things, you're still working with people. We have a lot of great, hardworking people that live in our communities, but there are some problem people at each one. It gets better over time if you're good at screening, but it never really goes away. Your manager will have to relentlessly stay on top of residents, trash and junk accumulation around their homes. It's not a small problem, it's a big, never-ending one. Our managers try and educate people about what their yard should look like and why, but some just never seem to listen until they have an eviction started on them. One thing that gets pretty dicey is when a resident decides that they want more storage or even worse, living space. And then they put up an addition to their home over the weekend. Not only are they rarely built properly, or good looking, but they can be a serious code violation. Management has to immediately notify them of the rules requiring approval by the community and the county before building anything on their lot. Then aggressively pursue them to take it down. The problem is they already had this huge grand vision and already spent the money on it. So getting them to remove it can often take legal action by you and sometimes even code enforcement to get them to comply with it. Over time, most residents do recognize what isn't allowed and start to consider the consequences before doing what their neighbor did. Big Brother. Another ugly issue with mobile home parks is Big Brother. Not your Big Brother, but THE Big Brother. Government. When I sit back and think about what causes the most headaches in this business, government is definitely towards the top. Since mobile home parks are a complex property, the local and state government officials often don't understand the laws and how to deal with them. Give someone misinformation and it's a problem. Give someone with power or authority misinformation and it can be a nightmare. Within a lot of the markets I'm in, we end up having to educate code enforcement, building departments, zoning, and others on how their laws work. It gets expensive and time consuming and straight up frustrating. These disputes can often involve fighting fines and disputing permit rejection and unjust code violations. You need to have good municipal land use lawyers available because you're gonna need them. I think most government employees do mean well, but they just don't know any better. Utilities. When I started out in the MHP space, I never would have expected utilities to be a big headache, but they're a close second behind government. When you own a mobile home park, you're gonna be in the utility billing and maintenance business. The exceptions are the very few rare communities with direct build utilities and municipal owned water and sewer lines. So when you have hundreds of people using your utilities, you're bound to have clogs and leaks. Sewer lines get plugged up with things that you just can't even figure out how they got it down the drain. I mean, how do you fit a towel or a big kid's toy like a Barbie down the drain? You really have to try. We found a lot worse that I won't get descriptive on. Water lines break, and if they're in a portion of the line that are your responsibility, the dollars just start pouring out until you can get someone out there to find it and fix it. Sometimes these leaks can take months and multiple attempts I've had some leaks cost as much as $15,000 to fix. Being an MHP owner feels a lot like being the water police. Mobile home parks and the landlord business in general is often very litigious. People think that they can sue you for anything, and the truth is, they can. Whether they get anything or not depends on the situation. Slip and falls have noticeably increased since COVID when people started getting hard up for cash. It's easier to fake fall and call a sketchy lawyer to harass you for a few thousand dollars than actually go out and earn it. Having good insurance is important because people will strategically find reasons to sue you and you want to be able to pass it on to your insurance company and not have to defend it on your own dime. It's interesting how often the person who slips and falls is also behind on their rent. Don't be surprised when you get these legal letters because it's going to happen. Stigma. 
When you decide to get into buying mobile home parks, you thought you were getting into some sexy investment business because people in real estate have recently gotten interested in them. The truth is there's nothing sexy or attractive about our property type. And so telling people at the cocktail party about it won't get you any applause. Since mobile home parks have such a stigma, they're usually thought of like the trailer parks in the movies. You can make it sound better by calling it a manufactured home community or affordable housing community, but nobody's gonna be impressed. So if you like the group to envy you, then you're looking in the wrong asset class. The stigma around them also causes government and others to dream of more attractive things to replace your property with. That isn't good when you need inspections or approvals for things. Your best bet is to sell the vision on how you're gonna be improving things to get them to wanna to help you, and then actually go out and do it. I'm sure by now you can tell government's not my favorite organization, so let's talk about licensing. Each state's different, but most require manufactured home dealership license if you're gonna plan on selling more than a certain number of homes per year, new and used. This is similar to a real estate agent or a car dealer license. In some states, it's some paperwork and a fee, but in others, there's classes and continuing ed you need to keep up on. In some states, you can get one license to sell at all your parks, and in others, you need a license for every property. The license usually requires a sign, an inspection, and more bureaucratic paperwork to fill out. You'll likely need a separate entity, insurance, bank accounts, and so on. This is all just so you can sell your own homes on your own property. It's not the end of the world, but it's just unnecessary for our business and takes time and resources to manage. Renovations. Along the lines of mobile homes, let's talk about renovating them. If you think that you're gonna go out and hire a local general contractor to come in and rehab the homes that you get into inventory, the chances are that you're not gonna find one that you can afford or that knows about mobile home construction. Hiring a contractor that normally works on single family homes will be too expensive. In addition, they won't know what they're doing, so they're gonna overdo it by spending money on material that's just not necessary in a mobile home. Your margins on a mobile home can be tight, so you won't have the luxury of hiring someone to supervise a crew, which means you need to go out and you need to hire either individual subs or you need to find well-rounded people that you can rely on to do a broad range of work. You'll need to find contractors that have experience and are interested in working in mobile homes. They're out there, but good labor is gonna be a challenge to source. Mobile homes have a lot of unique materials that you wouldn't use on a single family home, like skirting. This means that you're not gonna to go to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy them. You have to find a local mobile home shop or order them online. Since most mobile home parks aren't large enough to support a maintenance person on staff, and it really isn't needed for maintenance on park property, you have to source independence on a project by project basis. We've learned to tell electrical and plumbing contractors in the first couple sentences that the work we need done is in a mobile home park because for some reason, some just don't wanna do work in them. There's probably several reasons for it, one being that they don't wanna crawl under mobile homes, but unfortunately, it could be due to a bad experience in the past and the stigma around mobile home parks. Regardless, it reduces the options when you need someone to go work at your property. Another type of staffing that can be tricky is your community managers. I'll start out by saying that we have an awesome team of managers, but it's taken a long time to find them and it's taken some hard lessons to learn who we're really looking for. The challenge with mobile home parks is unless it's large enough one or you're doing a big turnaround, you don't need a full-time manager. Part-time manager is all you need. It can be hard to find someone in a mobile home park that you wanna hire when you're just taking over. Ideally, the manager lives in the community, but when you can't find that person, then you need to go outside the property for this important team member. Finding someone who has the skills and interest to manage a mobile home park part-time, it's not easy. You have to find the right person that's looking for just the right amount of work. And then on top of that, they have to meet all the other criteria that you need for them to be successful at it. When you find these people, you wanna hang on to them because they're rare. All that being said, you'll probably have some turnover until you find the right ones. All right, I saved the least talked about for last, mobile home titles. Just think about how well something that's processed through the DMV is managed. Just think of every time that you had to go there for your driver's license. It's like this long drawn out process for the most simple task. Mobile home titles are simple in concept, but government clerks don't agree. And in this business, it seems like every DMV handles things a little bit differently, which makes it hard to build a process or a system around something that's always a little bit different. Sometimes it just comes down to who's at the counter that day. 
So you've got this simple title transfer between buyer and seller, and it's usually pretty straightforward, or at least it should be. Then you have the duplicate title process for when you don't have the original because somebody lost it. This varies in complexity depending on who is on title and who's going to get it. Then you have the abandoned title process that you're inevitably going to have to deal with. This is when someone abandons their home, you evict somebody, or the current title owner is unknown. This requires advertising and jumping through the hoops of that county. When a home's missing a title and you can't find the VIN number, yeah, I said VIN, just like you have on your car, then it's usually an inspection and a court process just to get a new title. There's plenty of other scenarios that I'm not thinking of right now, but I think you get the point. Now, if it wasn't enough to process them, you also need to come up with an efficient way of managing the titles that you do get and keep track of how each county's DMV deals with them. I know this sounds like one big rant, but there are some ways to reduce these problems to where they're not as regularly occurring and are more manageable. This is a great reason why you should subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna put out new episodes with all the solutions and this way you won't miss any of them. If you have any other negatives that I haven't mentioned, let me know in the comments below. I read all the comments I get. Like any property type, there are gonna be some headaches and mobile home parks are no exception to that. All that said, they're a great investment. I'm gonna keep buying them. But going in with your eyes wide open, it's gonna help you make sure you're ready for it. So good luck.